I've always thought content collections are one of Astro's superpowers. But did you know you can actually reference one collection inside of another? That means you can enforce a structured relationship between your different data. Now with the new content layer API, that means you can even do this with remote data as well, pulling it in and then enforcing this structure. I've just finished reshooting and editing the entire module on content collections in my course, and I wanted to give you a small taste. You ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Okay, so I'm just using the basic blog template, but I've added one extra thing, and that is another collection for authors. If I jump inside these sample posts, you'll see that they don't have any authors at all, right? It's just a single post. In fact, I can confirm that by coming over to firstpost.md. You'll notice they've got no author metadata. I could also confirm that by looking at the schema, and you'll see, again, no author required. So I want to actually add an author here, but the important thing is I want to reference another collection so I can enforce that relationship. This allows me to both pull in the name and even confirm that I have an avatar, and I might use these authors somewhere else, like maybe on an author's page. So it separates out the data, but allows me to have a relationship between them. Now the author's data is actually just a JSON file over here, and you can see how I've got three different authors. So I've got Jane Doe, John Smith, or Sarah Johnston. So to start with, let's go ahead and make uh, another item here. We're gonna call this author. And I need to pull in reference like this, and that should have imported up top here, it does. And that allows me to come in here and just reference another collection by name. Here, this should be a string, and we're going to reference authors. Now, right now, you'll notice that it's going to error out of me because it doesn't have that. So I need to set this as optional just so we can get up and running without it yelling at us. Now, whenever I change the config file, I typically just restart the dev server because I find it works better that way um, because of the caching involved. And that way, I always know that I'm working with actual kind of fresh data. Okay, so let's come over now to the first post, and we're going to add an author. Now, what we need to do is reference this by their ID. So if I jump over here, you'll notice that I've just given the ID an easy to remember thing. It's actually just the person's name. And uh, so whatever you give this ID, and all of these have to have an ID, especially if you're referencing them in like a JSON or YAML file. If they're individual posts, like we have over here, it'll just auto-generate an ID based on the name of the post. Although you can also change that if you want. So for now, what I need to know is that Sarah Johnston needs to come in here as an author. So I'm going to set author and set Sarah Johnston. All right, so now there's an enforced relationship between these two. And if I want to see where this is actually used, if I jump over here inside the blog, because pages are where all those routes are defined, I'll find the slug. And right here, let's go ahead and console log the post to see what we get back. And if I come over here, you'll notice that I do get back the author, but I actually don't get the data, importantly. I just get an ID, and I get the collection it's a part of. Now, why does Astro do it this way? Well, I want you to think about a more complex situation. Right now, we've just got two different collections, but let's say we had a third collection down here, and it was something like to-dos. All right, so this collection, let's say the authors reference to-dos so that each author could have certain to-dos or tasks or whatever. Now, let's say I went ahead and pulled in all the blog, and it automatically fetched the authors, which it does not do. It just gives us the ID in the collection. We already saw that. Let's say it then came down here and fetched all the authors. Then let's say it fetched all the related to-dos. And then let's say those to-dos also referenced another collection. You could see how simply by pulling in my blog content, I might actually be over-indexing or over-pulling in stuff that I don't actually have any intention of using whenever I've called the blog itself. So by default, when you reference another collection, it just gives you the possibility of grabbing that data by giving you the ID and the collection name. It does not actually pull in the data so that you don't over-pull in stuff, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of this. And now what we need to do is do another kind of fetch. Once we've pulled in the author name and ID or the ID in the collection, we need to do another fetch to actually grab the content. Now we get two helpers here. And first of all, let's just call this like author data. And let's check that we have an author because we didn't make it required. So I'll say data author like this. If that exists, then I want to await get. And here are the two options you have. Get entry is for a single entry. That's what we have. There's also a get entries, and that would be if you say, hey, there's a relationship between like one post and possibly many authors. Well, then I would want to actually pass and get entries and pull in multiple authors. So we'll do that in a second. For now, though, we've got this get entry. This takes two things. First of all, it takes a collection name. Now I can hard code authors here, but I've also got that, you might remember, on the actual thing. So data.author, and remember it gave me collection. Now, that means I have one other thing. And that would be post.data.id. All right, so I'm pulling in the collection and the ID. That's what get entry needs. If for some reason there is no author, we'll just have an empty object. 
So let's console log this just to see what we're getting. I'll pull this down this way, and we'll look over in the terminal. And notice, it actually now gives me all the data, just as I would expect for any collection. And you know what? Why don't we just make this null, and that way we know we have nothing, and we can check off of the author data itself. So now let me come down this way, and we'll simply say if author data, like this, if this exists, then I know I actually have author data. So I'll pull in the author data dot data dot name. And notice Sarah Johnson shows there for me. Now, if you've used content collections in the past, this extra little fetch here, because now we could be referencing remote data and not just local data, it does need to actually be verified. So even if uh, I had this required everywhere, I'd still have to do this little check to make sure that I've gotten it back because now it can be null or undefined. And that way we've kind of done our check here. Now, of course, we can get more complex with the structure as well. So maybe I want to take all this and I'll just wrap it. And we'll have a div. We first add the paragraph and then maybe above it here, we'll add the image or the SRC, which just be my author data dot data dot uh, avatar dot SRC. And then we might as well add an alt as well. And this alt can be this right here. So let's drop this in like that. And then I'll set a width of like, I don't know, 60. There you go. We got Sarah Johnston coming in just fine. Now, what happens if I go to a post where I don't have an author? Well, we've already done the check. So you'll notice just nothing shows because it's only going to show if we have author data. So that's kind of the first thing I want to show you is just that basic relationship, how to do the extra fetch and why you might need to. Now let's come over here and say that instead of this being a straight up reference like this, we're going to say that this is a z.array where it could reference multiple different authors. Now this should actually error out on me. Let's go ahead and restart the dev server and just confirm that I'm correct. Yep, so it errors out of me because it received a string and it should have received an array. So let's come back over to our first post. And instead of this being a string, we're going to put this inside of an array, just like that. Now let's also add another one. So it was like John Smith, I think. That was another one of our IDs. Okay, so back up and running. Everything is working just fine, except when I come over this way, now we have to use the other one I mentioned. Not get entry, but get entries. So let's go ahead and comment that out just so you can look at that later if you want to. We'll say author data still, that's totally fine. And we're going to do get entries like this. We're going to pass it everything that comes underneath that author property. So that would be post.data.author. I do need to go ahead and pull get entries in. This should come from astro colon content. And now we should be set. Okay, now this will have some issues as well because we need to loop over our data. So here now I'm going to say author data.map. We're going to take each author. And for each author, then we will output all of this. Now we no longer need to grab off the author data. We can just grab off the data and to make it easier, let's destructure. So for each of those items, I can pull off multiple items. So let's come back over here, look at our first post and there we've got both of ours showing up. Now we just passed all the author data directly to here, but let's actually see what we're getting here. So I'm going to come over here and say console log the post data dot authors. Now that we have an array of authors, notice it looks the exact same, but I don't have to specify which collection or which ID. I can just pass it the whole array and it handles all that for me. Now, once again, like before, I have to actually check to make sure it exists because it's possible some posts won't have that. And then just like with any array, when I get back an array of items in a collection, I can map over those and output them on the page. So this whole idea of being able to reference other collections makes it really powerful to work with content collections. There's so much to content collections, whether it's using the built-in glob and file function or building your own custom inline loader or even object loaders. All of this is available in content collections. Well, thanks so much for watching. I trust it was a help. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.